Hey Canucks fans, I'm Clay Emo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. And this is my Canucks take on one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Wednesday, May the 6th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's both positive and timely. Quick programming note before I start. It's Wednesday, that means tonight. I'll be jumping on to YouTube at 10 p.m. for my weekly live stream. I hope you join me. We'll talk Canucks. We'll talk about draft. We'll talk about draft order playoffs, conditional picks, lottery, whatever you want. We'll talk about a great chance to check in with each other as well. So join me tonight right here on YouTube at 10 p.m. for my live stream. For today, for today's vlog, I'm thrilled to continue my Zoom chat series with Rob Williams, AKA Rob the Hockey Guy. And Rob is the managing editor of sports for Offside, which is the sports branch of Daily Hive. So you got me so far in Daily Hive used to be Van City Buzz. So Van City Buzz to Daily Hive and now Offside and Rob takes care of all the sports as well as some other writing as well. Um, so he's got a lot of responsibilities but I've known Rob for almost five or six years now and I, I owe a lot of credit to him and, and I appreciate him because he brought me into the fold at Van City Buzz back five, six years ago when I was just starting to get uh, into the writing thing. And I, I wrote for, for two years for Van City Buzz and I really, really enjoyed it. Then I, I, um, I, I moved away to continue uh, focus on this vlog actually uh, uh, on a more permanent basis. But Rob was always great to work with, great editor, and he was very supportive and very affirmative. So uh, affirming. So it was great to it's great to catch up with him. And we kind of chronicle his rise through uh, the media ranks, especially starting as a as a blogger for Canucks.com. And uh, I didn't do that justice. Canucks. Dot com. Yes, that's a Z at the end of the word Canuck. So you, we talk about that. We have a good chuckle about that. And we talk about, yeah, the different iterations of the, the, the website that, that he now manages and is a sports editor for. We get his current take on the Canucks, of course, and a whole bunch of other, thi a whole bunch of other things. So I hope you enjoy this chat with Rob Williams, also known as Rob the Hockey Guy. I'll check in with you on the other side. Hey, friends, we're back with these Zoom chats. And today, I'm, thr I'm always thrilled, but today... I'm really thrilled because I have, I can see a former boss of mine on this, on this <laughs> chat. Please welcome Mr. Rob Williams, also known as Rob the Hockey Guy. Rob, how are you, brother? I'm well, Clay. How about yourself? Things are good. Yeah, we're week seven or week eight of this uh, of stay at home order, but uh, we're surviving. Our kids are older, so um, they're independent. Gail's a teacher, as you know, so we're cranky. And uh, thankfully, I still have my job. And it sounds like uh, you are busy as ever. I am, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I think right away after sports basically shut down, I think it was kind of the unknown of like, okay, well, what are we gonna, what are we gonna write about, you know, mm -hmm. for the next, however, and that, and we were thinking, you know, weeks and a couple months, not like years now, right? Uh, which some people are talking about, um, but it's been yeah. busy. Like, there's, we've kind of been doing uh, all sorts of different things. So everything from, you know, Boreas Salming talking about getting coronavirus <laughs> to like the laugh, NBA, yeah. you know, the NBA, well, he's doing better now, but the NBA, uh, maybe playing at Disney World, so some crazy things like that to just like, you know, what are like some random old Canucks evergreen types of articles, like best one hit wonders in Canucks yes. history was, was a fun one to write. Saw so that. It's, it's been, uh, yeah, it's still been pretty busy. And um, although I have been helping out on some non-sports articles of late, which has, been, which has been different for me, for sure. Yeah, no, I want to get into that. That's, that's cool, Robin. For people that aren't uh, aware, Rob, when I met Rob many years ago, he was Rob the Hockey Guy. He still is. But now you are Rob, I can write about all sports under the sun guy. <laughs> so you are at... <laughs> But so talk to me, you're at Daily Hive, I believe is the official name, but Offside is the sports branch and it used to be Van City Buzz. So maybe just uh, take me qu through a quick evolution of, uh, you know, the company, you're, you joining it and what you're doing now. Sure, yeah. Uh, I started off as a blogger, um, Van City Buzz in 2013. I wow. uh, was looking for somebody to write about Canucks because... Uh, you know, this is right after 2011, 2012. Everybody's all interested in the Canucks, so they decided to bring somebody on to write about the Canucks, and then they, uh, I think they've won two playoff games ever since. So that uh, makes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm the jinx or what, but no, yeah. With John Tortorella's first season behind the behind the bench was when I first started writing for Van City Buzz, and um, you know, a few months later, um, was entrusted to to lead the uh, 
lead the, I don't know if we'd call it sports department, but we were, I was only writing about the Canucks and, and working with freelancers and uh, yourself for, for mm-hmm. a brief period of time as well. And um, yeah, I did that as a side hustle for two years, um, then got hired on um, just before the rebrand to Daily Hive as, as Daily Hive was looking to uh, expands into not just Canucks coverage, but do all sports within the city of Vancouver and now also doing sports in every city that we're in. We're now in seven cities, five in Canada, and we're also in Seattle and Portland. So uh, lots to cover. I'm I'm still mainly do you know, I do a lot of Vancouver coverage. I'm still very mm-hmm. Vancouver centric, uh, but I do a lot of uh, Toronto and Calgary coverage as well. And sometimes Montreal, Edmonton, and sometimes, wow. uh, sometimes other cities. So I'm kind of all over the map. Um, but I wouldn't have it any other way. It's a, it's a ton of fun. Uh, the people I work with, they're awesome. Uh, awesome. And I get a lot of freedom to have a lot of fun and, and, and do some different things. So uh, the Offside brand launched last year. So that's what we're calling our sports section now. Um, we've kind of got different channel names um, that are, you know, try to reflect the brand of each channel. Uh, mm. So a lot of people would know about Dished, which is our food channel. Uh, right. Urbanized is is a lot of our uh, you know real estate and SkyTrain news transit that sort of stuff, um, and yeah, Offside was was a name that uh, we, we brainstormed it for a while and it was one that I liked, so uh, glad they chose it. <laughs> um, and I think it's been it's it kind of reflects um, you know our sports coverage. We're 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 not taking ourselves too seriously. We're, you know, we like to have a bit of fun, um, you know, yeah. while also sharing you know, the boreas solving coronavirus. <laughs> uh, of course, and I, yeah, I want to reflect happily on, on my time with you in a, in a couple of minutes. So is it fair to say then that when your move to full-time basically coincided with the rebranding from Van City Buzz to Daily Hive, is that fair to say? Yeah, it was about yeah. uh, six, seven months before the rebrand. And so right. it was kind of thought it, it had that in mind uh, where right. they were going to be expanding uh, the company uh fairly rapidly i think we were in calgary at that at that point uh, mm. so we were in calgary and vancouver but then we were about to to rebrand and launch in, in toronto montreal and yeah so um it kind of coincided with that and you know the company is kind of on on the way up and and uh Good. you know it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and expanding more and more all the time and it's been amazing to see like i i mean when i first came into the office as you know as a full-time staff member i think we had 10 to 15 full-time staff mm-hmm. and now we are i think the entire company-wide i think we're like 70 people now wow. um so it's, it's just it's just wild you know and people in different cities and we have a yeah. toronto office as well so uh yeah it's really cool good that's really that is cool and just before i press the record button you were saying that despite everything that's going on that your viewership has actually been quite steady and quite consistent over the past few weeks yeah, I mean, site-wide, the, yeah. I, we have record page views. I mean, obviously, the, like, the, the news coming out, you know, yeah. in the last two months, it's, it's like, you know, there's stories that you, you might get, you know, a story that would be normally the biggest story of the month. We would have, like, five of those in a day. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you know, unfortunate news for the most part. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say the sports news is going uh, quite as uh, quite sure. off the as off the charts, but it's you know what it's yeah. it's remained fairly steady. I would I would uh, say you know people are people are looking for a distraction, you know, which is which is part of the reason why we're doing these you know uh, you know fun random stories like about Kevin BX's TikTok videos and and all these kinds of things, right? Um, yeah. You know, I think people are looking for a distraction in that sense, and then there's also legitimate news actually coming out. Right. Uh, on a day-to-day basis and yeah and that's gonna pick to up one, yeah sorry yeah, go ahead, no, I, was, I was yeah no I was thinking back to one that I was that that came out during this break that we had was um, uh, looking at Vancouver as a potential MLB city and actually mm. there actually being like some you know uh, reason to think that that may that might happen with the Arizona Diamondbacks visiting the city and, and them actually kind of considering BC place and and it not being the non-starter that I, I would have assumed it would have been. So, uh, yeah, you know, like, so there's news coming out. There's, 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 you know, people are, are still want to talk hockey as we see with like, everyone's talking about Judd Brackett today and, and yeah. <laughs> everyone's talking about Tyler Myers last week. It's, you know, it's fun. It, you know, people want a distraction. They want to argue about Canucks. So, 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's still going to be going on for sure. Well, I got all my connects questions for you in the second half of this thing. So we'll, <laughs> we'll hold on to that. Uh, in all seriousness, though, I do appreciate you gave me a, a shot about five years ago now with, and, uh, and everything you said and every, every, the character that you are, it rings true. Like you, you take your work seriously, but the site, the, the tone, it doesn't take itself overly seriously. And I think that's why it does resonate with a lot of people. I know you let me, uh, for the most part, uh, go go uh, crazy with my parody stuff. I remember getting my kid in a wig and doing some su silly letter to Jordan Leopold when he got traded or something. And I did a th uh, Jimmy Fallon, uh, you know, inspired thank you notes or, or whatever it was. So I know I had a lot of fun working with you and the creativity that you gave me. And you gave me a chance to actually uh, the confidence to express myself that way and still stuff that I'm doing today on my YouTube channel. So I do Thank you, Rob. Uh, what, yeah, you I want to tell. Yeah, I was go going to say. I was going to say. Like people know you as the guy that, that does all the the parody songs and everything. But I always really liked your like your straight Canucks analysis articles as well. I thought you you were always a uh, you know an insightful writer and and, and that sort of thing but i but you you get you get painted with the parody brush yeah for <laughs> yeah for for better for us no i appreciate that robin i know you did affirm me when i was writing you said no my actually writing and my analysis was actually quite good uh you know i i love doing that kind of thing and i still do it on my vlog right i'm not doing music every day but the the one thing that killed me because i'm no good at this kind of stuff is all the back end stuff like the pictures this size and the headings like this and this i'm like oh man this is uh this is taking longer than i take to write the article <laughs> oh don't don't worry about that Wyatt and Omar still don't know how to do it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I think I just found my trailer, but that's that's really that's really really good. Um, no, that, that no, I, and I do appreciate that. One thing I, I do want to share with all the viewers on on the vlog here is one thing that Rob and I would always joke about is anytime I came up with a parody song video, um, he would make fun of me, but he would admit that he liked it when I put players' names in the song because it was so easy, right? BX, uh, Ham Hughes, S, uh, Kessler, Edler. I could just go on and write like a whole uh, a whole verse with just uh, player names. I'm not sure if you liked it or you're just pull, uh, pulling my leg, but I know we would always have a chuckle about that. Too easy, you know, there's right? That, there's that one song that I still, when I hear it, I hear your lyrics to it. It's the Sugar, it was the Maroon 5. Oh, yes, we did Sutter, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Sutter. <laughs> I apologize, yeah. you know, for the yeah. two dozen songs now that you might hear on the radio, I apologize for, for that. that. But that yeah. happens a lot now. Yeah, Sutter, McCann, uh, Ben Hutton, Jake for ten at hand. <laughs> very, very good, Rob. Very, that, that's awesome. Uh, one other question I want to ask that, thank you. I want to ask you about offside. So what's the one sport that you've been writing about, learning a bit more about, that you're surprised that you actually, you kind of like and you kind of enjoy it? And you obviously, aside from the Vancouver Canucks, What's another sport, another angle of sports writing that you, you have actually uh, enjoyed now? You know what? I, I get into all of them. Um, yeah. I, I, I have no interest in golf. I have no interest in <laughs> MMA. Everything in between I can, I yeah. can kind of get, um, get interested in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's any one specific one. I, I enjoy, um, you know, geez, when the Olympics are on, we cover just about everything. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's there's one specific one that the, I mean the Raptors run was was so much fun last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's so many I can't I can't nail down just one. I love writing about the the White Caps as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean hockey for me is still like it's number one for sure. I think sure. the NBA may, maybe basketball in the NBA just because the players will say anything <laughs> like they don't <laughs> care. Uh, you know like. You think about, I always say like in the NHL, um, you know, players, you know, players are always so guarded with the, with their message and it's smart to do that. But I always say like players never say ever, never, players never say anything. So if they say anything, it's everything, right? So the yeah. smallest thing will be, will make headlines in Vancouver if, mm -hmm. a, if a hockey player says it. Well, basketball players are saying stuff like that all the yeah. time and way more so like it takes a lot more for for an nba player to to really get headlines um so i think that's a lot of fun the players they're you know larger than life personalities and they're willing to speak their mind so i think that's maybe a, a, a cool aspect of, of covering the nba yeah. yeah great answer and you see that around the, the nfl draft all the funny tweets go around the nba yeah they're you're right i don't know if it's a, a canadian culture thing where you know majority of hockey players are canadian or simply it's the culture of the sport but i would agree with you so that's why canucks fans get so excited on twitter about the simplest things i think we'd agree <laughs> speaking of hockey and you rob did i see footage of you skating in the beautiful glacier ponds mountains of 
Lake Louise or, or is that somewhere else? Yeah, or what was that? yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lake Louise. That was a that was a trip through. Uh, it was actually, a, I mean, a full disclosure, a trip through Apple. Apple sent me there, and, and uh, wow. it was a chance to kind of check out the functionality of their new phone. And, and uh, it was during the um, the pond Lake Louise Pond Hockey Classic that is held every year. That's yeah. not run by that's not that's not run by Apple. That just goes on every year at the uh, at the shots of Lake Louise. So that was wow. Pretty, yeah, I mean, uh, it was stunning. Not, the footage was stunning, yeah, man. Yeah, there's not a better there's not a uh, a better setting to. I mean, I love pond like when whenever it freezes in Vancouver for like you know the the day or two every three years. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna tell you the pond that I go to because I don't want okay. people going to it. But there's a there's a shallow pond in Burnaby that freezes over faster than anywhere else, and I'm on right. that pond all the time. And uh, yeah, it's it's um, so yeah, getting a chance to do that. I feel like that's the one thing about you know growing up in Vancouver is like we don't mm. get that kind of shared Canadian experience of skating on the outdoor rinks yeah. uh, like they do elsewhere in Canada. So that you know. Phew, it was really cool. Yeah. Oh, it was sure. great footage. Rob, the influencer guy right there. That was, that was really good. How'd you get the Rob, the hockey guy mantle? Is that, is that something you uh, named yourself or did someone come up with it? You said, yeah, that sticks, man. I'm taking that. Yeah, actually. Um, I remember exactly the moment where we came up with it. Uh, so this is back in the blog blogging days. And so the original name of my blog was Canucks.com. So it was Canuck with a Z dot com it was that was, that was cool it, back then that was cool back then it was my my, my friend Ben who who I started the website with myself uh he used to always add zeds to things like back in high school just like in random like uh messaging and stuff so that was kind of, kind of played on that and then we also thought it was smart it was like that z is really close to the s what if somebody misses the s when they're going to canucks.com they had right to us but, um, you know, I think we realized it was a pretty terrible name <laughs> after not too long because there was just, you know, it was hard to explain to people if you were talking to them and then there was just no personality on, on, um, on Twitter. And I, and I was looking at what some of the other blogs, uh, you know, the, the current bloggers and Pasta Bulas, I thought they had like such great brands and, and um, you know, really, you know, could really show off the personality in, in that sense. So. I think that's what we were going going for um, with Rob the Hockey Guy. I remember my friend of mine, his name is Rory. He came up with it. We were sitting on my patio and, and we were, you know, just kind of, you know, spitballing ideas. And he just was like, you should just be like Rob the Hockey Guy or something. It was like one of the first ideas that, that, that came out. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, like that's, I like that. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Ben drew a caricature of me. And yeah. That's the website logo. And and uh and then i s switched my twitter name and, I, and i've kept it ever since so uh yeah no i was i was pretty happy with with how that turned out but uh yeah and it's kind of funny how years later um it's you know if i'm on a podcast or i'm on a radio interview or anything it's it's almost uh, it's very rare that i get introduced without it also including rob the hockey guy yeah no that's cool that that means that you were onto something and it's a beautiful segue. It's almost like you saw my questions or something where I was going <laughs> to ask you about media appearances. And um, I've seen you on TV. I've heard you on the radio. I, I, I've heard you on the Zoom calls asking Canucks questions. You seem to be pretty comfortable. Is it fair to say you're comfortable in that arena now? And whether it's in front of a camera or behind a microphone? Yeah, I think more and more. I, you know, the first few times of doing it, I was nervous as heck. And I'm just trying to like, <laughs> you know, you're like hard stumping as you're being asked the question and everything. So yeah, definitely get more comfortable with it each time I try to I, I still go home and ah and ooh too many times I, as I'm told by uh <laughs> by friends of mine all the time but <laughs> they're just jealous uh, that they're not on tv <laughs> uh yeah no I, I I really enjoy doing it I mean it's, it's a lot of fun um and and always exciting to do oh that's pretty cool that's pretty cool and then our how do you um are, have you been doing some of these Zoom chats with with some of the players right now, with the either NHL sponsored or Canucks sponsored? Yeah, uh, yeah, the Canucks they're not doing it this week, but they've been doing it every other week, uh, uh, usually on Wednesdays, doing the Zoom chats with the with all the media members. So that's been kind of it. It's actually, I think at first it was kind of an awkward kind of a mm -hmm. um, process, but I think it's it's um, 
you know, everyone's getting more comfortable with it now and, and, and it, it's, it's working a little bit better. In some ways, in some ways, it's very convenient. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, you don't have to go all the way down and wait for the players and do all this. Yeah. You just like, you just click the zoom button and then you're, you're talking to Jacob Markstrom. So, uh, in that <laughs> sense, you know, I think, I think we, we, everyone would rather, uh, you know, have things the way they were, but, uh, yeah. but I think it's, a, they've, they've done a pretty good job at um, adapting quickly and, and making players available in that sense. That's awesome. And take us, Rob, just take us behind the curtain just a tiny, tiny bit. If the calls, whatever, it's at 11 in the morning, do they just need you there like five to 11? And then when it's your turn to ask a question, how do they cue that up if, so they don't have 10 people trying to unmute their microphone at the same time? Yeah, I, I think I saw Jeff Patterson tweeting about this, you know, a week ago or so. Saying oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that, that he was saying that uh, that he hopes that we never have to go back to like conference calls, you know, like <laughs> because that's what you know that's what's done. If they, if they ever need to make somebody available remotely, they they would do a conference call, and it's like old school conference call, and people, you know, somebody doesn't have their line muted, and they're making noise, and there's echoes, and it's just and it can be chaotic if there's a lot of especially if there's a lot of people on the line. Uh, so that goes on when there's, when there's player conference calls or conference call with the general manager. Uh, and so there's none of that here because, you know, the moderator can mute everyone's line. And, uh, so yeah, you just jump on, jump on before, you know, ready for the call. And, and, uh, I believe that the first one I, I was on was an NHL call and I actually had to submit my question in advance so i thought that uh, didn't that didn't work quite as well i don't think but the ones that the, the, the Canucks pr staff have been putting together if you need to ask a question you basically just type in you know dm the Canucks media relations yeah. uh person and 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 then they prompt you and they'll say okay rob rob, rob williams from daily hive has a question then your right. line gets unmuted or get, i think one time my line was <laughs> was unmuted and muted again and then i was like uh <laughs> <laughs> But for the most part, it's been it's been really uh, and not you know as as best as possible. I think has been a pretty pretty smooth transition, um, yeah. and definitely I, I'll agree with Jay Pat. Like definitely better than a than a, um, a conference call where everyone's trying to jump in and, and talk over each other. So right. uh, it's a little right. it's easier to get a word in edgewise and a lot more organized this way. That's awesome. And just before I ask you a couple about a couple of current Canucks issues, uh, what's the one article Rob that either you wrote? or you helped uh, edit and write or, and post that in your, your seven years at Daily Hive, uh, Offside, Band City Buzz, that you're the most proud of? Is it, is it Canucks coverage? Is it a playoff game? Is it one particular profile? Is there one like article or one series that really stands out to you? Yeah, I mean, there's a few. And it, uh, I've been asked this question before, and it's funny. I, I never jumped to a Canucks oh. question, a Canucks article necessarily. I, I mean, there's so many I'm probably forgetting a bunch of I think I think maybe because I write about the Canucks more than anything else that mm -hmm. that that doesn't stand out quite as much for me I know I remember we I, I remember we were first to write about Trampkin uh leaving for Russia and everything but like for me I think it's more like having a unique story and also you know getting the interviews um and, and doing that that sense because I'm you know Part of the job is I'm trying to do a million different things quickly yeah. and trying to get things out. So when I have time to really kind of dig into a story and, and uh, do something like that, I, I think it can be, you know, it kind of, for me, stands out. And I, I remember maybe it was just because it was an early story I did once I was full time uh, at Daily Hive. It was a, it was a story about a, vo a volleyball player from East Vancouver that had a brain injury as a, as a child and had gone on to become and overcame all of that and became one of the top volleyball players in, in BC. And mm. just, you know, I was the only one that had the story. I, I ended up uh, interviewing uh, the kid as well as, as well as his mom. And, and um, I think it was because I was new to, I always say this, when I was a blogger, I, I, I was a writer, but I didn't really consider myself like a reporter or right. a journalist necessarily it, it I, for me there was a transition when i when i became full-time then that was more i was more of a journalist more of a reporter and that was really one of the first times where i really felt like okay you know i'm actually kind of really doing a um you know a, a, a story that involves telling somebody else's story and i, and I thought that that was um a, kind of a, a cool thing the other one I, for 
for me that stands out is we did a series on Vancouver possibly being uh, able to to support an NBA team again. I did this. Yeah. Mm. Three. I feel like I feel like everyone's talking about the Grizzlies and the NBA more in, in the last couple of years. But this is maybe uh, this is about geez, I think about three years ago now. Um, and you know, interviewed uh, Tom Manak and, and Arthur Griffiths, and we did a five part series on it. And I thought dove into some interesting issues, and it was something that that not a lot of people were talking about it at that time. Um, so I, so yeah. those are the two that for me, I, I want to give you a, a really like <laughs> my favorite Canucks, Canucks one, but there's yeah. just so many that I think they just have all blended together. No, that's, that's a great answer. The first one, cause that's a, I love how you said your story was telling someone else's story and that's a local human interest story and a feel good story. And I think that's, that's a, an awesome example. And I, I don't remember that one immediately, but I do remember your five point, your five part, because it wasn't, you looked at the business side, you looked at, uh, you know, the, the player side, would people want to come here? You looked at, you know, influence, like it was a really, really good series. And, and uh, yeah, I, I was a jam pack holder. I, uh, I think I averaged one win out of 11 games every season. <laughs> and I remember, I, it's so stupid, man. I saw Stu Jackson in the concourse one year and I actually said to him, Hey Stu, uh, my name's Clay. I'm a jam pack cutter. He goes, Oh, nice to meet you, Clay. I said, yeah. I see one win a year. What's going on? And I don't know, man, what he was supposed to say. And he says, oh, oh sorry. And then I actually felt bad for asking such a stupid question. But I, you know, who knows? Yao Ming, hey, Steve hold, Nash. Holding his feet to the fire. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Wait, well, he deserved little, it. You know me. I'm very <laughs> averse to conflict. So that, that conversation didn't go that, that far. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about a couple of Canucks issues. If that's cool. I know yeah, sounds great. you you posted a story yesterday, a really good one. I, I read, you said, you basically said five things we have to consider when it comes to uh, the draft, if the draft comes up. And so, you know, a lot of people are talking about uh, basically the potential of this June draft happening. And it sounds like that's the way it's going, that there, there's talk that, you know, Bettman and Daly are trying to push it through, but they're still trying to allow for feedback from GMs and board of government, blah, blah, blah. Um, do you think it's a good thing if the draft is indeed set named to be in June, whether it's early June or, or mid June, do you think it's a good, good thing and why? Or why not? No. Yeah, no, I think it's crazy. Uh, I, I think having a draft mid season causes so many problems that I just don't think it's going to be going to be worth it. I, I obviously, mm -hmm. I think this is a, a money driven decision. First and foremost, you know, this is a, a, a chance to capitalize on actually having some sort of live sporting event. And I mean, I would love to watch it. No doubt yeah. about it. But I think that they're going to sacrifice a lot to get it done because a a they're they're picking just the, the fact that it's happening mid-season <laughs> what kind of trades are we going to be seeing at the draft yeah what kind of rumors are there going to be like you know what i mean like that's that's half the fun of the draft is is room is a the trades you know gary bettman coming up to the microphone and say we have a trade to announce but yeah. it's also the the dozens of trades that don't happen that we hear all the insiders talking about beforehand. Um, that's a lot of fun, right? I mean, that's yeah. it's it's rumor season, it's trade season, and if the trade deadline has passed and the season's not over, what are we are we going to see like uh, trades of like a third round pick for a, for like two fourth round picks? Like, is that the like is that going to get anyone excited? I don't think so. So I think that for me, that's the that's one of the the biggest drawbacks. The the second drawback is we don't know what the standings are. They're going to change yeah. the draft. They're talking about changing the draft lottery rules to yeah. go back to how it was, which was completely unfair. And that's why they, they changed the rules. So now they're <laughs> going to give the, they're going to give the Detroit Red Wings a better than 50% chance to get the first pick. Well, yeah, I saw I that. Yeah. See how, like, how is that? How is that fair? And they're doing this because they don't want a team to be outside of the playoffs at the, at the pause right now. Mm -hmm. win the lottery and then go on and win the Stanley cup. I mean, right. we're going to, we're going to change the entire process because we're worried about, I would say a pretty unlikely scenario. I mean, the Stanley cup's probably going to be won by a team that's in the playoffs right now. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's, and, and if it happens that a team does that, well, like that's, that would hardly be the most unfair thing to come out of the NHL. Yeah. Um, you know, like look at look at the Canucks falling falling down in every single draft lottery. You know, <laughs> th that's a little more unfair. I I would surmise that than one team getting lucky and and being able to pull off uh, right. both winning the lottery and winning the Stanley Cup. 
Yeah. No, you make a good point. There's so much uncertainty. And, you know, I, as I read there and as you, you um, clearly articulated, if they go by points percentage, the Canucks are deemed in a playoff spot. And therefore, technically, they give their non-lottery or their, yeah, their non-playoff pick, the bottom half, to uh, New Jersey, who, who got the trade from Tampa. And you do a really good job of outlining, you know, how, what that means. But, yeah, you're right. It is a lot of changes for maybe for money or for the sake of just getting um, – in front of the eye, you know, the eyes of, of fans that are, are starving for content, but it seems to be in, uh, reckoned the integrity of a lot of things. But then you have another person say, no, now's the year to take a chance, right? Now, now's the year to think outside the box, but you're right to what, uh, to what demise or to what, you know, damage. I just don't think, I don't think it's going to be that interesting if there's no trades allowed and we just, yeah. we're just waiting for, you know, teams to select, select players like that. Yeah. I, I get that the, the other reason they gave was that they, they don't want, they, they want to be able to just kind of get it over with as well. Like they don't want to complete be rushed, rushed to complete the season and then rush to the draft and then rush to the next season. Right. I just, I just kind of think like that's just gotta be the way it is. I, I, I think they're going to be producing a, a less than stellar draft middle season, changing mm-hmm. the changing. The, I mean, there's, there's huge issues of, of fairness. Um, you know, what about never mind a team, winning the lottery and then winning the Stanley Cup. What if, you know, what if the Canucks give away their, you know, if they, I guess they're giving, they're giving away their pick if they make the playoffs. So what if they give away their pick, but then they end up missing the playoffs? I don't know. There's just so many things right? right. that I I feel like that, that it just, it just seems highly unfair and, 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 um, and probably not a good move, but Geez, it looks like they're really strongly considering it. So, so it's yeah. going to be interesting to see what happens. You're right. That would be the worst case scenario, but the most Canucks thing to happen is, is you're right. We're deemed to make the playoffs. Therefore, our draft pick goes to New Jersey. Then they move up as high as they can. They might not win the lottery, but they move up. And then we don't make the playoffs, and then we're stuck without a first-round pick, well, which would have been it's already it's, it's already the most Canucks thing to ever happen because when, when the Canucks were good, the bottom feeders had a, had a very good chance of getting a high pick. As soon as yep. the Canucks are bad – that's when the lottery changes and they move down on the draft every year. They're the first team to do it like every year for how many consecutive years. And wow. now they're a playoff, you know, a borderline playoff team yeah. again. And now they're going to make it such that nobody's moving down on the draft. <laughs> it's already the most connects thing ever. Well put, well put. Um, one more connects question. Then we'll go move into our closing segment, which I call the six pack, which I don't even know why I do that. Cause I don't drink. So we'll call it six pack hey, Pepsi oh. or something. I hope you. I hope you talk to Omar. That's. I don't know if he has uh, copyrights in the six oh, pack still. That's right. Okay, that's the second Omar me- uh, mention. I better. I'll, I'll reach out to him after this. Um, <laughs> would you, in a perfect world, uh, forget a perfect world of the big three of Markstrom, Toffoli, and Tanev? How many of those three do you see being on this roster next season? Hard question to answer because yep. we don't know what the salary cap is like. I think they bring, they find a way to bring back Markstrom for sure. I think Tanev's probably gone. Toffoli is the, is the the wild card in it. I think. Yeah. I, I think if the if, if there's enough cap space, then that they can do it. I think they're. I think that it's a. I think it's probably a fifty fifty shot. Yeah. If there's not enough cap space because because of what's going on in the world right now and revenues are down, then I think he's not back. So uh, yeah. probably less than fifty percent chance that Toffoli's back. Yeah, you know. I was so excited to see a top six of Toffoli, Pedersen, Miller, Besser, Horvat, Pearson, and we got it for one game, right? <laughs> I know, I know. We got it for one game. All right, Rob, this has been awesome. Let's wind up with uh, what I call inspired by Omar. How's that? My six pack, three Canucks questions, three non-Canucks questions. You can answer these as briefly or as long as you want. Is that all right? Sounds great. All right, number one, are you an extrovert or an introvert? Extrovert. Do you, you want me to expand? Sure. Or That's do, what extrovert no, does. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> no, yeah, extrovert for sure. Um, yeah, I like to. I, I don't know. I like hearing my own voice probably too much. I don't know. <laughs> that's why. We, that's why we get along so well. Uh, your wife, your lovely wife Chelsea, an extrovert as well. Yes, I would say. Yeah, more, more of an extrovert than an introvert. She always says, like in bigger groups, she's she's not as uh, as talkative. Whereas I'll probably try to be the. Uh, the center of attention more so, but, right, um, right. but yeah, no, she's, I would describe her as an extrovert as well. Awesome. Number two, 
Who is going to be more important to the Canucks going forward, Elias Pettersson or Quinn Hughes? And you can use whatever definition of important that you want. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Cop-out answer is both. Okay. Um, probably Quinn Hughes because they just don't have a defenseman like him. And, you know, I mean, they don't have a, a center like, like Pedersen, but I mean, we've just never had it. We've never seen a defenseman like, like Quinn Hughes on the Canucks before. And, and if he's, you know, a Norris trophy caliber defenseman, that is yeah. so vitally important. Um, yeah. I mean, you think about like, you think about a, a championship team. I mean, Goaltending is the, always the most important position. If you don't have goaltending, you know, you're in, you're in big trouble. Yeah. Defense is next, then it's centers, then it's wingers. So yeah. I, I'm going to go based on position. I'm going to say Quinn Hughes, but obviously, um, you know, they, the, both those players have a chance to become, they could be the, the two greatest players in Canucks history when, they're, when their careers are over. Uh, yeah. If everything goes as, as, um, as, it, as, you know, Canucks fans hope that it does, they could overtake – the Sedins is, is the greatest players in Canucks history. So, so yeah, both, but if you make me, you're making me pick, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Quinn Hughes because of his position. Well, I commend you for, for actually putting your foot down. Uh, and it's true. Um, actually, if everyone I've asked this, the everyone except one have actually answered is Hughes. Only Thomas Drantz picked Pedersen. Oh, yeah. But I, I think Thomas Trans was just trying to continue to rag on me all interview, but that's fine. No, that's good. That's a good <laughs> answer. Uh, number four, actually number three, Netflix or Disney plus. Uh, I have Netflix. I don't have Disney Plus, so yeah, I'm gonna okay. have to say Netflix and yeah. no, I, and uh, I don't, I don't know any shows. I'm, I'm, see, I'm not a big pop culture guy. Yeah, I used yeah. To edit, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. Like when I used sure. to edit Wyatt's article, you know, editing Wyatt's articles every now and then, it, like you know how Wyatt writes, and he'll go on yeah. a tangent or Lord of the Rings tangent or something. I have no idea. So that, I mean. There's, it's kind of the joke between me and him how I just no, don't know anything about pop culture. So I'll just ask him, like, Does it, is this what you meant to say? I don't even know what it means. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, that's what I meant. I'm like, okay. Just so, trust me, Rob. Yeah. That's what he's saying. <laughs> so Netflix. That, I'm going to watch I'm gonna watch the episode, you know, the next episodes of the Jordan documentary tonight. So. Yeah. So we're in the same place. Yeah. You, you just finished episode four, the Phil Jackson one. So now you got five and six. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm in the same spot. That's, that's a really cool uh, story about Wyatt. And of course, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, before Wyatt wrote, wrote the Athletes and, and the Armies, he was uh, writing uh, regularly for Daily Hive, correct? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's still a freelancer for us. So like, he awesome. still writes from time to time. But yeah, it's, Great. it's um, yeah, his regular stuff is, you know, he's obviously he's known for, you know, the, the post-game coverage. So, awesome. um, you know, he does that more. He writes more for the Athletic than he does for us. Cool. Number four, if you had a shot, a chance to go out to dinner, they're, they're going to pay, of course, for uh, with any of these three guys. Is it Travis Green? Is it Jim Benning? Or is it Francesco Accolini and why? <laughs> I mean, just, I'm just imagining the dinner that Francesco will be, uh, will be paying for. So that, that, might be, that might be good. Ah, geez, yeah. yeah. I'm probably, probably, um, probably Accolini. I mean, that's mm. like we don't get to hear from him as often. Um, yeah. Probably got some good stories from. I want to hear the story about him and and uh, what was the story with him and Gillis and the wine in Boston and, and what was that story that that's been told where where they're talking about things? No, I mean, yeah, I, I think Aquilini. Um, it would be interesting. To, you know, I think everyone um, has their opinions about him, and and uh, there's always you know there's always chatter about uh, what he's like and everything like that. So I think that that might be something that. You know, we don't, I don't know as much about Aquilini as, I, as we do, I think, about Benning and, and Green. So that, I think that would yeah. be the, my answer. Cool. You won't offend me either way because I'm half-half here, half Japanese, half Chinese. Japanese food or Chinese food? Japanese food. Love sushi. Yeah, yeah definitely. Good choice. And last question, who is the next Canucks player to go up in the Ring of Honor? Wow. Yeah. I can, I can, it's, I can you let know, you... It's, it's, yeah. It's such a hard, it's such a hard thing to answer because I, I'm, see, I'm critical of the ring of honor because I don't know what the qualifications are to get up there. Like, right. Orland Curtinback, first captain in Canucks history, but like, I mean, he played like three and three seasons in Vancouver. Like he wasn't <laughs> like a, 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 you know, so, you know, he's like an ambassador to the team and everything. I don't want to like rag on him too much. Don't worry. He's not, he doesn't watch but, my vlogs. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but he's not, you know, he's not, he's not a, you know, 
he's not one of he's not even a top twenty player in franchise history. Like right. and and Harold Schnapps, everyone loves Schnapps, but like, you know, he's not a top five defenseman in Canucks history. I'm not I'm not sure if he's a top ten defenseman in Canucks yeah. history. So so what is the qualifications to get up there? It seems to be that there has to be that community aspect and that mm-hmm. sort of fan favorite aspect. So if we're talking about that, then you'd have to say that the likes of Kessler and Bertuzzi are probably not likely to go up. Mm-hmm. Is it is it Alex Edler? I don't. I mean, that would be. Yep. BX is sure. a couple people. A couple yeah. people mentioned Bexa. Yeah, BX is probably Bexa. I mean, if we're thinking like 2011 guys. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would have to be. Yeah, you know what? Based on those parameters. BX is probably a good choice. I think Luongo never goes up to the Ring of Honor because I think that would be considered almost like a slap in the face because he's, um, you know, you know, a candidate to be to, to have his jersey retired. And I think that's also part of the problem with the Ring of Honor is that it's the guys that are that are borderline for the jersey retirement. You can't put them in the Ring of Honor because that's seen as as kind of a that'll be that'll be seen as a definitive answer that you're not getting your jersey retired. Right, because so obviously think that, one of the other, yeah. Yeah, so it's great for the likes of, of like the BXs and the Burrows that were for sure never going to get their jersey retired. Yeah, I think it's great for them, but yeah, it's it's sort of an awkward thing that they have. I I like it, but I also I, I think that it's a bit of an awkward, um, you know, way to celebrate uh, some players in franchise history. Yeah, no, that was an excellent answer. That was well well said. Thank you. Okay, Rob, if people want to read your stuff or follow you on social, where can they find you? Yeah, I, geez, I hope they already found me if they get to the end of this podcast listening to all my uh, my rants. But um, yeah, no, uh, dailyhab.com, Rob the Hockey Guy on Twitter. Um, you'll see me writing about everything. Awesome, Rob. Well, thank you. Thanks for taking the time. And yes, I know just like you, we are all hoping that uh, we get some news You'll for me so I can vlog about it for you so you can write about it. And we'll see if they end up ever doing this draft next month and if the Canucks end up uh, winding up their season. But I really appreciate you taking the time to come on, Rob. Pleasure is all mine. All right. So thanks for watching. You can see that Rob's very insightful, very intelligent, and a really good speaker and a very humble guy too. And I always like that about Rob. And he's very affirming, very positive. And um, the fact that he's memorized words to some of my Canucks parody songs is is uh, also a bonus as well. So leave a comment below. Tell me what you thought about uh, what Rob had to say, and if there's anything that stuck out uh, stuck out to you from what he said, whether it's his, his outlook on the current Canucks or any of his answers to the six pack or his rise through you know the media ranks or whatever it may be, I'd love to read your comments down below and engage with you as well. And don't forget, like I said, 10 o'clock tonight, join me on YouTube for my weekly Connects live stream. Would love to say a quick hello. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Have a great day, God bless, and go Connects Go.